Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Heartbroken to Heart Open Telesummit interview series. I'm Janine Lee, your host, and I have gathered over 20 experts to help you and all of us awaken to life's possibilities and create a future we love. I have with me today Delina Fajardo, Fajardo, excuse me. She is a number one best-selling author, transformational coach, and motivational speaker. She started her career in the medical industry as a physician's assistant and practiced clinical medicine in a variety of specialties, including open heart surgery and emergency medicine, before she realized that she was betraying her own happiness and fulfillment for success, money, comfort, and significance. It wasn't until she hit rock bottom that she discovered the answer she was seeking. Her journey of self-reflection led her down a path of a more purpose-driven life with an intention for more happiness and fulfillment. She now has both success and happiness and two thriving businesses and is also a top consultant coach with Tony Robbins, where she is recognized as the dust above outstanding. A natural-born leader who is strongly connected to her faith and the divine, Delina's past guided her to discover who she really is, what she was created for, and what direction to take. Her primary focus is to inspire and motivate people towards living a more meaningful life, one infused with purpose, self-care, and fulfillment. And today she's going to talk to us about the power of extraordinary health, how to create vitality and energy with self-care practices. So we're really open to that, Selena. Vital yeah. energy. Yay. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Thank you so much. I, I'm so grateful to be here and to talk to your listeners and, and to be present for you guys and to add more value and to share and contribute and, and give you my best. Nice. Nice. I'm so glad to have you. So we were going to start off just by talking about living in a beautiful state. And I, what is that? I love oh, that. Yeah. You know, I found that Self-care practices are, are so important if we want to bring more balance and harmony into our lives, right? And life is getting so busy. We're busier and busier, and, and it just requires us more and more to keep, you know, keep our energy up and, and to keep up. And so it's really imperative to fill ourselves up so that we can give more of ourselves back to to others. So mm-hmm. one of the, the principles I believe in, in in being able to fill ourselves up so that we have an extraordinary life, and I'm sure we all can agree that something we all have in common is that we want to live an extraordinary life. So, you know, I want to I be able to go deeper with you and, and, and go deeper within and, and allow your, you and your listeners to let go and to liberate yourself using some of the self-care practices. And one of the self-care practices that I, that I coach on is living in a beautiful state. So the truth is we all really need to start taking 100% responsibility for our experiences in life. And it's true that, you know, we can't always control the events in our lives, but we certainly can control the experiences of those events and how we experience those events. So having an extraordinary life really requires us to live in our terms. And what that means is it's our responsibility to create our extraordinary experiences no matter what. Nice. Yeah, so living in a beautiful state, you know, this principle is, what I mean about that is it's it's our essence, it's our mood, it's our emotional state. You know, based on my own experience, and and I see this all the time with my clients, we we become very successful at achieving multiple things that we want, and we start to stack our achievements and we start to stack our accomplishments out of habit. And so then that leads to us wanting more being more and doing more. And eventually that just becomes really exhausting and it results in, you know, us having a lack of sustainable happiness and fulfillment and balance. And that happened to me personally in my life. And the truth is, you know, with with all that success, if you lack happiness, then that feels like failure, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so- I can totally hear our listeners agreeing, with nodding, lots of nods going on out there, yep. Yeah, I'm sure you can relate to that. So, you know, life is really about setting yourself up to win, right? Mm -hmm. So it's so important 
to be able to create that ecstasy now because more of something else, more success or anything else, it's not going to matter. So the more success you have, it's not going to bring you the happiness that you're seeking. And Mm -hmm. life is too short, right? It's way too short not to enjoy it. So, you know, we control the amount of happiness we feel. And so living in a beautiful state really is, you know, living in a state of an emotion that you want to invoke that allows you to enjoy life. And Mm -hmm. I'm sure we, we have all experienced an enjoyable time. We've all experienced happiness. We've all experienced feeling alive. And one of the things that I invite you and your listeners to do is to bring yourself back to that time when you remember having that experience. When was the last time that you imagined enjoying an experience that you had in your life? A time that you really enjoyed yourself. Bring yourself back to that space. Remember what, who was in your life then. What were you doing? What were you doing? You know, how were you interacting? What were the emotions that you were feeling? Right? And so all those emotions, those emotions are really beautiful states. And most of the times I find that when we're feeling those beautiful states is usually when we're contributing to others or helping others in need. So, mm-hmm. right, so if you're not in a beautiful state, it's really good to remember that when you're contributing to somebody else, that you will automatically go to, into that beautiful state. So mm-hmm. I encourage you to, right? Well, I, I'm just thinking about some of the folks, I mean, you know, the, the the topic of the summit is heart broken to heart open. And I'm actually hearing some people going, well, that all sounds well and good, but what about when my heart's broken and I can't find that beautiful state? Do you got any hints for them? Absolutely. First starts with the decision to not stay in a suffering state. Because if your heart is broken, ultimately you're suffering. And who are you hurting if you're suffering? You're hurting yourself. So it starts with the decision you know, decision, you know, to just live in a beautiful state. That means making a choice to live in that beautiful emotion no matter what. That means to live in that beautiful emotion even if your heart was broken. Because you're making the decision to move life forward. Are you going to make a decision to move life forward in a suffering state or in a beautiful state? And so there's three things that cause suffering states. So if your heart's broken, it's the fear. All fear is suffering state. So we're talking about the fear that you lost something. So you lost a loved one or, or you, or so, you know, or you have less than something. So you have less than, so you, maybe you, you lost a relationship. Or the fear that if something's never going to happen for you. You're never going to find that ultimate relationship. So it's the fear of loss or loss less than what you want or that you'll never have what you want. And really, all that fear is, it's the fear of, of, of losing your certainty and your comfort. It's the fear of losing freedom or your significance or recognition. It's the, it's the fear of not having love and connection. That's what it is. It's only fear. So you have to start with making the decision that you're not going to live in fear anymore because you're mm-hmm. only hurting who? Yourself. Yeah. Have you ever heard the acronym for fear being false evidence appearing real? Yes. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love It's so true, isn't it? It's, uh, it is. In most cases, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Things that and, seem so real are, well, when you really get down to the bottom of it all, it's really not. It's, it's so falsity. Because our true state is joy and bliss and peace yes. and contentment, right? Yes, it absolutely is. That is our natural state. Yeah. That's our natural state. And so it's about getting back to that, you know. It's one of the things I work with my clients the most is getting back to our higher self, our pure self, you know, our authentic identity. It's so important. So, you know, if we're sick, what the truth is also, if we're suffering, we're only suffering because we're putting all of our attention on ourselves. Again, it's going back to what I'm lost, what I don't have. I've lost my certainty, my comfort, my security, my significance, my recognition, my love and connection, right? I don't have. And so we need to remove that, and we need to make the decision that that's just not how we're going to live anymore. And instead, we need to come from a place of appreciation, enjoyment, you know, growth, love, contribution, gratitude. That's what will open up our hearts. Mm -hmm. So is that 
and can we set attentions around that? Yes. So what I do a lot with my coaching clients, because, you know, honestly, the path to success is emotional mastery. So the path to this is about emotional mastery, right? Otherwise, we're subjecting ourselves to the external factors, and then we become really reactive to the world and the life in our – and the events in our life instead of being responsive and proactive, right? So – we want to work on mastering this beautiful, you know, beautiful state concept and so that it becomes your identity and you don't have to think about it anymore. So some of the tools and strategies that do that is to really work on being present in the moment, to work on, you know, what you can be grateful for in the moment, you know, what can you mm-hmm. appreciate in the moment. Even the person that broke your heart, if it was a person, whatever broke your heart, whatever closed your heart. The best healing is to focus on what could I appreciate about that person because life happens for us, not to us. It's happening for us. So there was a lesson. There was a gift. There was something. It served a purpose. I'm a purpose coach, right? So everything serves a purpose. That person, that experience, it all served a purpose for you. And when the purpose is served, sometimes it's time to move on. You know, God has another opportunity for you. You know, I'm a faithful Mm -hmm. person really have to have faith and trust and let go. You have to learn to forgive and release the past. And so a lot of it's about presence, gratitude, appreciation, and letting go. And we're talking about letting go of, of holding on to a story or a belief and also letting go of the resistance in our body that we're holding on to because it gives us certainty. So I do a lot of work with my coaching clients around that. And it's really, really important because the quality of your life is based on the quality of your emotions. Whatever emotions mm-hmm. you're feeling every day, that's the type of life you're going to have. That's the type of experience you're going to create for yourself. And if you want to have an extraordinary life, you really need to have extraordinary emotions. And and that that's works. Interesting. I was wondering how – I've always thought of emotions like weather. They just show up. Sometimes it's rainy. Sometimes it's sunny. Sometimes it's stormy. But you're talking about directing our emotions. Right? Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. Yeah. So some of the other principles I talk about is setting intention and priming your day. But absolutely, you need to have the intention and the commitment to create the emotional state that you want for the day for your life. You need to have, I'll say that again, you need to have the intention and the commitment to creating the emotions that you want to live in. I don't wake up feeling motivated, inspired, and happy and joyful and fulfilled and in bliss. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I've created this state. I've created this person. You know, and it brings energy and vitality into your life. It, you, you come into everything looks better, actually. You know, you feel better. So, yes, it is your job. That's why I talk about taking 100% responsibility for your life. It is your job and nobody else's job to do that. It is nobody's responsibility to to give you that. It's only your own. Right. I didn't think it was somebody else's responsibility. I just kind of thought emotions like weather just kind of happened and you just deal with them. Yeah. But you're talking about something in to- entirely different, it sounds like. That's right, because if you're, if you're like weather and you deal with it, then you're reactive to whatever. Right. You're still responding to the external factor. So you're responding right. to your place, you're responding to your spouse, you're responding to your kids, you're, re- you know, um, you're reactive to, I'm sorry, you're not responding, you're reactive to the environment, right? I'm talking about mm-hmm. being responsive, so taking responsibility in the sense of you create your internal world and you show up to your external world that way and your whole life will change. Okay, well, that makes sense, I'm focusing on the inner, that place of peace and bliss and all the stuff we were talking about before, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So creating it for yourself and walking Mm -hmm. that way, you will create the experiences that will support that. So it's a matter of recognizing and setting the intention uh, for recognizing who we are, our natural (laughs) state. (laughs) Yes. See, that was perfect. Absolutely. But it's so hard initially because they can't connect to that yet. They don't know who they are. That's one of the things I help people. You know, when you're, to, to, like I said, I, I'm a purpose coach. When you are living your purpose in life, you have to first discover who you really are. And right. some lost that with conditioning of society. We, you know, so we really, I've had to experience myself. So understanding who you really are and how you're here to contribute 
you win the game of life because the purpose of life really is to find your life purpose and to live it and to contribute it wholeheartedly. Right. So we both, I believe that. I totally yeah. believe that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, go ahead. Now, that's a beautiful state. I mean, yes, that's it. So we're talking about, you know, living in a beautiful state, but creating, we understand what a beautiful state is, those emotions, creating, being committed to creating those emotions to set your day. You live in that okay. emotion okay. no matter what. Right. And so what role do affirmations play in this? Because sometimes I think affirmations work. And they're good reminders, and sometimes I think it's just kind of like trying to bully a part of us that isn't really um, on board. <laughs> so I'd love to hear your take on the affirmation. That's so true. So I've had this very similar belief, and what I've come, the truth as I perceive it, is that you cannot put an affirmation on top of junk, meaning it's like putting perfume on poop, meaning... <laughs> You know, and, and here's the thing. If we haven't cleared our stuff, if we haven't gone within, if we haven't let go of the resistance, putting an affirmation on top of that, you can't feel it. You can't mm -hmm. own it. You're just saying something from a logical mind, from a logical perspective, and you and it doesn't move you because you have not done the work to release the resistance, to release the pain, to release – to be to be even just neutral. You haven't opened your heart even. There's a belief there. All resistance is is there's a belief there, an energy there that is preventing the affirmation from working. There's a limited belief that's creating resistance in the body, and that resistance in the body needs to escape with a new belief or doing some energy work. And with that, then when you are neutral and open, when you say an affirmation, at that point, you can experience the affirmation. Okay, that makes total sense. So limiting, you're saying replacing the belief, replacing limiting belief? Yes. And so, is that part of the daily intention or is there something else? Yeah, so it can be, right? So if you have, if you can set a daily intention and you can say to yourself, you know, uh, today I'm going to, one of my affirmations, so I have, my business has, um, uh, 21, 21 card deck of affirmation cards, beautifully designed affirmation cards that I read every morning as part of my ritual. So one of the affirmations in this card deck is, I learn from, forgive, and release the past. Now that is so important if you have a closed heart. Right? Mm -hmm. So let me this. I learn from, for any of you, repeat, you know, you can repeat it after me if you're listening. I learn from Forgive and release the past. And if you say an affirmation and it's triggering you or you something's like, I don't want to or I don't know, you know, it's like that little thing where you're not really in, in, in grace with it or at peace with it, then you know right there that there's some work that needs to be done. Don't ignore that. And so what you mm -hmm. want to do, you want to go to the belief that's connected to that resistance. So that trigger is because there's resistance and you want to find out what is the belief that is associated with that resistance. What is it that I truly believe? And if there's a limiting belief that says, well, I'm not going to forgive because I've been hurt or, you know, I'm not going to release the past because the people hurt me. And so how could I forgive them if they hurt me? Right? We want right. to, right, so we want to be able to, and think of, we understand that we must release this to move forward. So what we want to do is say, okay, and what else is true? So, oh, yes, that's good. A yes and. A yes and. What else is true? What other mm -hmm. things that you bring to your life? What else is true? Yes, you want to, what else is true? I want to move forward. I want to open my heart. I want to be in love. I want, you know, I want to find a relationship that is fulfilling. I want to love and to receive love. I want to be able to forgive myself. So let's focus on the what else is true. Let's like talk about, like, you know, creating um, a mindset shift and, and, and getting rid of limiting beliefs is about the what else is true and bringing in the new belief. And then once you have that, then try to see the affirmation again. I forgive from, I, I, I learned from forgive and release the past. Then it feels true. 
Does that make sense? Mm, it does make sense. Yeah, because if it doesn't feel true, it, there's a part of you that knows you're just lying. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not buying it. <laughs> That's exactly it, that I'm just lying. And, and, and then your body knows. Your body is, you know, you have to listen to your body. Your body will tell you, right? right? We have to be connected to our body. We have to be connected to our heart. So I, yeah, I encourage you to use some of those practices, you know, to to connect, to connect with yourself first, and to open it, to find where it is that you are resisting, and to and to make the decision that you do not want to hold on to the resistance. It has to start with that first. You have the awareness that it's there, and then you make the decision that you don't want to move forward that way, and then you work through strategies and tools on the how. Mm-hmm. I love the yes and part. Yes, it's true. They hurt me, and I can't figure out the way to forgive them right now, but I also want to be free from this. I want to love them. I want to love myself, all of those things. That is, that's very powerful because I think if you, it's sort of like uh, gratitude, right? If you name enough of those, it starts switching the energy, making it easier to let go. It becomes more weighty than the hurt or the betrayal or whatever it is. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I agree. That's and, right. So, so you go through all twenty-one of those affirmations every morning, huh? Yeah, and I'll, I, if you want, I can read you another one, a couple, if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's hear a couple so, more. I, I encourage you all just to listen and 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 if you can, repeat it for yourself because you know it's when you say it and declare it for yourself when you really start to feel it, right? So. One for the, um, these are all to clear the chakras. They're all the intention of these affirmation cards. I have, I, you know, I have a huge purpose behind them, and it's to clear our energy centers because I'm all about healing within, right? So the, the one that I am going to read for you right now clears your first chakra, our grounding chakra. So this one is, um, I am safe, protected, and strong. I am grounded, and my foundation is solid. I am safe, protected, and strong. I am grounded, and my foundation is solid. Mm-hmm. So think about, like, you know, saying that every morning and starting your day, right? It's just going to create such a feeling of centeredness, isn't it? Right, right, absolutely. Yeah. So some of the ones that open up the heart chakra, since we're, you know, all about going from a broken heart to an open heart, right? So yeah. one of the things here is I am loved and I accept and love myself as I am. I am loved and I accept and love myself as I am. Mm, that is so important. As I am, not as I will be, not if I was perfect, as I am right now, worse and all. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I struggled with that for a long time, self-acceptance. And I'll tell you, we cannot pass that lesson in life. We can't. We can't skip over that, especially mm-hmm. if you are trying to open your heart. It does start with loving self. And loving mm-hmm. self starts with accepting self. I have been through it, and I know the pain. I understand. I, I know the fear. But the other side of it is pure bliss, it's love, it's acceptance, it's gratitude, it's appreciation. I have some really great exercises for that, too, to learn how to love and accept yourself, to love yourself and accept yourself. Really great exercise. So here's another one. I move towards generosity, compassion, and kindness to myself and others. Mm. I move towards generosity, compassion, and kindness to myself and others. And the mm-hmm. last, isn't that beautiful? Love it, it is. I'm just taking oh. that, my eyes closed, and I'm just taking it in, letting my body feel it. Oh, it's good. Listen to this one. This one's good, too. This is another heart chakra opening one. I am grateful that my energy resonates with love, gratitude, forgiveness, empathy, and generosity. Mm-hmm. I grateful that my energy resonates with love, gratitude, forgiveness, empathy, and generosity. Such a powerful one. That is. Very nice. Thank you for sharing those. That's uh, 
that it just feels very healing, grounding, and kind of confirms what you've been talking to us about setting intentions and about claiming this internal space for ourselves, mm-hmm. the, um, the beautiful state for ourselves. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I, I encourage you, what I do in my morning is I, I take 15 to 30 minutes in my morning just to set this intention. And so I'll start with, you know, just a meditation or prayer for like 15 minutes. And then I'll say these affirmation cards. I'll go through all 21 of them. And it doesn't take a long time. And I'm looking at beautiful images. They're so beautifully designed. I'm looking at beautiful images. And it creates that beautiful state that I was talking about for you. You know, and then when you're in that beautiful state, then I say affirmations that are going to move me towards my success. Oh, or there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You put yourself into that state first. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we're in alignment, and it can actually do some good. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. So what about getting leverage on ourselves? Tell me about that. So, you know, the best way, and this is a perfect segue, because the best way to to really explain this is to experience it. So now that I put you all in these beautiful states, <laughs> mm-hmm, nice. well, I'm going to teach you a little, um, you know, go through a little visual meditation. And we're going to get leverage on you. My goal is to get leverage on you so that you can take action, okay? So I want everybody to focus on what it is that you really want in this stage of your life. What is it that will make a big impact in your life if you achieved it? And I want you to envision and look as if you're there. Look from your eyes as if you're there and you've achieved it. I want you to experience it fully. What does it look like? You know, how does it feel? What do you hear or smell? Who are you with? Now, I want you to make that that image bigger and brighter. What do you see? Right? Experiencing it from your eyes, really being present with it. And now that you're there and fully experiencing your ecstasy, I want you to get leverage on yourself. I want you to take action towards fulfilling it. So I want you to come back to the present with all of your limiting beliefs, all of your limiting patterns, all of your conditioned behaviors, all of your fears. And I really want you to think about how that limiting pattern has been working for you. And if you don't change your current situation, what will that mean? What will it cost you? What would be missing in your life? Who does it hurt? It doesn't just really hurt you. Who else is it hurting? And do you want that? Right? And so if you want to make this change, or maybe you don't, you know, if you don't, do you want to make this change or do you want to hold on to it a little while longer? If you want to make this change, then when do you think is a good time to start? And what are the feelings that you want to feel instead? If it's love, if it's freedom, if it's joy, if it's happiness, whatever it is, what is really preventing you from feeling that? And are you really going to let yourself get in the way of your dreams? And if not, and you're with me, then what's your next step? Is it getting a mentor? Is it getting a coach, a gym membership? You know, living in a, deciding to live in a beautiful state no matter what, deciding to open up your heart, deciding to prime your day with affirmations, deciding to have healthy living and a healthy diet, an alkaline diet. Whatever you decide, decide today to live with an open heart. Now is the time to step into it and to make that decision to take action towards it because tomorrow, tomorrow might be too late. And if you're here and you're listening, then you're not an average person. You're outstanding because you're striving towards love and personal growth. And I believe that, you know, you've had experiences in your life that, you know, built your character where you've made sacrifices, but it made you stronger. And to be here means that you're willing and committed to grow and to learn and to contribute 
And I celebrate you for that. I now want you to celebrate yourself too, you know? I want you to celebrate your progress. Progress is happiness. Look yourself in the mirror and say, you rock. I want you to feel mm-hmm. who you are, right, and how far you've come. And I want you mm-hmm. to live inspired and motivated and, you know, feeling worthy. It's so important to feel worthy and to feel loved. You deserve it. Mm-hmm. Thanks for that pep talk. It sounds very Tony Robbins-like. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I learned from that, right? I That's definitely. right. Yeah, that was great. I, I'm not making fun. I, I thank you for that. I think it's, sometimes when we're in that sort of state, we need somebody on the outside championing us. So thanks for doing that. You're so welcome. It is my pleasure. I I hope that it was, you know, made an impact in in your life. And, and or if, if I planted a few seeds that it would inspire you to make a single change and it's all worth it, right? So, right, um, right. Yeah. Yeah, one step at a time, whatever one, that is. That's it, one foot in front of the other. Yeah. So you also um, mentioned the alkaline diet, and I know this is a little bit off of what we're talking about, or I think it is, but tell us a little bit about that, because I know that's very important in your world. Yeah, so, you know, the, one of the other principles to having extraordinary health and extraordinary life is energy, right? I mean, we all agree that we need energy and vitality to thrive, yeah? So, you know, we need energy to take action. We need energy to, to maintain our progress and momentum. You know, health is vitality and health is energy, right? Nice. So, you know, the core principles, there's core principles behind having extraordinary health. Um, but the one that I wanted to, to mention and, um, and talk to you about was having an alkaline diet. So, it's really important for us to have a proper ratio, you know, between an acid and alkaline foods in your diet. So if you want to have optimal health, you really have to have the proper ratio. And a lot of the, a lot of us are walking around very acidic. And there's a lot of problems with that. And, you know, too much acidity, too much acidity in our, in our body and our tissues is the cause of cell mutation, which leads to disease. So one of the highest priorities of our body is to make sure that our blood alkalinity maintains a pH of 7.4 to, to support ourselves. So a highly acidic diet is going to put strain and stress on the body to maintain its optimal function and vitality, and it causes the body to break down. And not just that, it causes the body to hold on to toxins and to, and to fat. So, you know, I've seen a lot of this in, when I was practicing medicine. A lot of the common symptoms of toxicity overload or high acid in our body are constipation, depression, you know, frequent colds and sinus infections, bad breath, obesity, headaches, acne, any types of skin rashes or skin conditions, joint pain, stiffness, aches, fibromyalgia, uh, menstrual problems, allergies. A lot of it has to do with our diet. And specifically the amount of acidity in our diet. So I would see this all the time. Patients would come in with these symptoms, but they didn't have a bacterial infection or a virus, and yet they had all the symptoms of it. And, you know, the truth is, you know, having this type of diet will create a physiological response from our body if if our body can't handle it. It's an overload. Hmm. So we have to be really careful. It's so important to have the awareness of how an acidic diet affects our vitality and health. So what I thought uh, to do would be the great, you know, freebie gift that I'm offering is is this alkaline diet chart where it's really going to show you and tell you, you know, what foods are alkaline, what foods are acidic, and what's the appropriate, you know, ratio between those. Mm, Nice. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it's really important. I mean, at the end, you know, at the end of the day, our health comes first. It's the most important thing, right? So without health, we don't have anything. That's right. Without health, we don't have energy. We don't have vitality. And, you know, you can't do everything else. It starts with having energy. It starts with having health. So at the core basis, if we can get that, you know, it will at least give us what we need to have to throw our next step. We talk about one step at a time. This is your first step, you know, getting our body, you know, to to be healthy from within. 
Mm-hmm. So do you recommend that people take this chart that you're giving? Does it have, like, uh, amounts and sort of a diet on it? Does it just list them? I, I haven't seen it. Yep. So it's going to list – it has, for instance, it will tell you the percentage of alkaline versus acidic. But it's going to give you specific foods to avoid and foods to bring into your diet, foods to eat less of and foods to eat more of. So it gives you all the specific alkaline. It'll break it down to what's highly alkaline, moderately alkaline, and and moderately alkaline, and then what's neutral, and then moderately acidic and highly acidic. So my recommendation is, you know, at least reduce the acidic foods that you eat because a lot of times it's just the awareness. We didn't even realize that what we were bringing in was highly acidic. So if we can, so yeah. So what is like a couple of really highly acidic foods? Uh, what I'm thinking of is like meat and coffee, dairy yeah. maybe. Yeah. So perfect. So you know these would be the poisons. So alcohol is a big acidic. Coffee is acidic. Uh, you know meat's acidic. Um, but even highly acidic. I mean, no one would think about this, but eggs. You know, uh, pork. Dairy, yes, is acidic. Another one that a lot of us abuse, artificial sweeteners. Oh, uh, yeah. Huh. So we're doing this every day. We don't realize it. And it's a small thing but has a huge impact. So if we can move from, you know, and the ones that I just named were the highly acidic. So think about your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you have eggs or coffee with sweetener, you know, already you've had, you know, your first meal is highly acidic. So the goal is my, you know, the goal is to let's have the awareness of what we can remove or move more towards the mildly acidic or neutral, and then have more highly alkaline foods or diet to balance. It's all about balance. To balance ourselves. Oh, nice. So, so just uh, since we brought up the really highly acidic, so alkaline, just to give listeners sort of an idea, is more like green foods, green absolutely. juices. Think green. What else? Think green. So always think green. So you'll have your kale, your cucumber, celery, spinach, uh, you know, all those green, deep green um, vegetables, even avocado, green beans, garlics even, you know, lemon is even. Because it's about when do you would think some people think the lemon is acidic, but it's how is it once it's digested in the system? So what we want to do with also one of the principles of having an alkaline diet is having to, to neutralize your body with water, with lemon. So you want to drink half of your body weight in ounces a day of water with lemon. Hmm. Half of your body weight in ounces a day. Wow, because you're really a big person. You've got a lot of drink. <laughs> so I tell that to yes, yes, that's right. That's right. And we're not a lot, you know, how much water are you drinking, right? So when you start to think about that, wow, when I learned about that, I thought, well, I better buy myself a carafe then. You know what I mean? I bought myself a big container and I trained myself. I filled that up with, with lemon, fresh lemon. I squeezed it and put it in the, in the jug. And then I trained myself at that, and I filled it up in the morning. That's what I had to drink for my day, daily intake. Mm-hmm. That's pretty initially, new, yeah. yeah. Initially, it was like a quarter, and I was like, all right, so now I'm used to it, right? But if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. It's already, it's too late. Mm-hmm. So you have mm-hmm. to get yourself to a place of understanding and, and, you know, understanding the importance of this and taking steps towards, towards health healthy living, energy, and vitality. And water is a big mm. part of that. Mm. Nice. Nice. Uh, well, this has been really informative on many levels. Thank yeah. you for all of these. Oh, things. that's great. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm completely here to, for you and your listeners. And I and I really hope it made an impact. And, and um, you know, I invite you all to, to visit me and visit my website and reach out to me and let, let me know how what you thought about the talk and any insights. That would be fantastic. Nice. And so the chart of the alkaline diet is going to be on uh, Delina's uh, portion of the Summit website. You'll get a direct link there. So you can just go there and snag that, pin it on your refrigerator or something. So when you go to eat something, you have that guide. 
So thank you for that, um, the importance of that. That's a good place to start. It is. You know, I, I got to tell you, I, I've, you know, I've, I've written three books on how to find your purpose in life. I have the Affirmation Card Collection that clears your chakra energies. So at the end of the day, your health comes first. And this is a great start. It will have really great impact in your life. This chart rocks. If anything, it's awareness, you know, for you to make the change. And even if you make a small change or you eliminate or you reduce an acidic food, that's going to impact you tremendously. You know, it doesn't have to be an all or none, but it has to be something. <laughs> yeah. right. right, right, right. Yeah, to make that shift. Yeah. Well, great. What a, what a great thing to have the key to the root of disease. So nice. No key in the lock. Yes. Yes. So thank you so nice. much. I'm so grateful. This was absolutely my pleasure. And uh yeah, I'm excited for you all. This is fantastic. Celebrate yourself. I celebrate you. You know, you rock and I want you to just continue to move forward and I want you to just un- I want you to just relax knowing that you're in the right place at the right time with the right people in your life. You know, and life is really here to serve you. It really is. Mm. Nice. Nice. Well, well, thank you so much. Um, Okay, everybody, until next time, we're signing off. Bye.